Hey guys, what's up? This is Mondays with Maybay. I am Jeannie May, and this week I wanted to talk to you kind of about something that I get told quite a bit, and I don't, I don't really know how else to say, like, anything other than I owe my success to God, right? Like, I've had so many people come to me lately and say, wow, you're just living life to the fullest. You know, you're traveling all the time. You're going to all these fashion shows. You're a successful model. Like, you're doing so good in life, Jeannie. I'm so proud of you. Wow, you came so far. And I hear it more often than not, and I'm very grateful for it. Don't get me wrong, but it's like, it, I, I didn't do it on my own. <laughs> I owe all my success to God, and I don't know how to make that more clear. So today I wanted to touch base on that because... As it says in Romans 12 too, let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. I allowed God to change me into a new person by changing the way I think. I was so miserable and at just such an all time low that I wasn't proud of the person I was. I wasn't proud of who I was. I wasn't proud of what I was doing. I was honestly ashamed of who I was and and what I was doing in the world. I was not someone I was proud of. I was not someone my son could be proud of. I was not anything great or anything to speak highly about until I allowed God into my life and I allowed God to take residence in my soul. And that once I allowed God to change me by changing the way I thought and the way I looked at life and the opportunities that presented themselves, I, I never changed. I never would have been anything great. I would not be the person I am today. I would not be with the man of my dreams today if I wouldn't have shaped myself into the person I am today, if I wouldn't have allowed God to take residency in my soul. Yes, I'm living life to the fullest, but my version of living life to the fullest, see all you guys think I'm living life to the fullest because I get to travel to all these super great places and I get to meet all these really wonderful people and I get to speak at seminars and I get to go to high quality fashion shows and I get to be a successful model and I'm published in magazines and I have my own office and blah, 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 right? Yes, that all means I'm living life to the fullest, but how I perceive life to the fullest is life beyond the common. As long as my life is better than a common life or an average life, that's life to the fullest to me. And I can't have that without God. See, all my success I owe to God. When Whenever someone's like, Jeannie, how did you do it? Wow, you've come so far. Wow, you've grown so much. Wow, you're so successful. How did you do it? I, I didn't hate it. <laughs> like I, I turned my life over to God. I let go of the reins and I said, okay, God, I'm, I'm not in control. You are help me. And he did. He did just that. He, he helped me shape me into a woman that I could be proud of into a God fearing Christian into someone worth living. All my success I have, I owe to God. I didn't do it on my own. I've done it through discipline, through obedience, through prayer after prayer after prayer, and after just failure and victory. <laughs> you will never hear a successful person say, oh yeah, I did this my first try. No, they failed a lot, okay? But it's what they learned with each failure that helped them become successful. I learned that I can't do it without God, and all of my failures led me closer to God. He's opened every single door for me. I might have had to help wedge it open a little bit, but he's opened every single door for me. He has given me an abundance of opportunity to prove myself, to prove my loyalty, to prove that I have no problem saying, God has given me this life I'm living. God has blessed me. I owe all of this to God. You ask me how I did it? I am like, yeah, God. I couldn't, I wouldn't be where I am without God. God guided me. God did this, God did that. God, 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 God. Most people are like, Jeannie, you talk a lot about God. I'm like, yeah, I know. That's that's because he's part of me. <laughs> I'm not ashamed of it. I love that my life is living God. I love that I can be obedient to Christ. I'm not perfect at all. I mess up quite a bit. But I love, I love that God is a foundation in my life. I love that I'm not ashamed to say, I owe all my success to God. I love that people can come to me and see my light in my soul and in my spirit and say, you're such a godly woman. Wow, you're so encouraging. Wow, you're so empowering. All because of God. See, the moment you allow 
Jesus to take residency in your soul is the moment that you're accepting him as your shepherd. He is the door. He is the gateway to all of your success. He is the gatekeeper to peace and eternal life. I cannot tell you how many times I hear people just saying, I just want to be happy in life. And I'm like, okay, well, what does that actually mean to you? Like, what would make, what would make you happy? And they're like, I don't know, just like, you know, happy. I'm like, do you like, like that giddy, oh, yay, kid, no, oh, I'm so happy. Or is it like, wow, life is just great. And they're like, yeah, just, life is just great, you know? And I'm like, so you want peace. You don't really want like, like the happy giddy feeling. You want like, you want to be at peace. And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, do you have God? Because I guarantee you, God would help you be at peace. <laughs> like, that's typically my question. And they're like, huh. No, I don't think I do. I'm like, okay, well, you need to do something that reconnects you, that brings you back to peace. Like, I, I can honestly say I'm at peace with my life. But that's because I have God. I have a strict routine. I am obedient to the Lord. There, there, I mean, there's, you know, there's days where I fall off, just like anyone else. I'm not 100% perfect. But, but, I'm obedient. See, I'm a very firm believer that if you are not disciplined, if you do not make time to be with God, then you're going to become more vulnerable to the tactics of sin and to devil. And I don't know about you, but I need God's mercy. I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. Lord knows I make mistakes. <laughs> but the less time you devote to the Lord, the more vulnerable and susceptible you become to the devil's tactics. I've noticed personally in my life that when things start going wrong, when I start having this negative perception of life and I just start being so overwhelmed or so easily agitated, I've noticed it's because I'm not spending that time with God. I'm not devoting time for God. Even if it's just routinely praying every morning or doing a devotional or journaling or just even 20 minutes a day, guys. It's not like he's asking for hours upon hours upon hours of your time. He literally just wants to be on your mind. He literally just wants you to routinely say, Jesus, I'm here. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for all you've blessed me with. Trying to have that connection, trying to build that relationship. When you're in a relationship with your partner, if you don't see them ever, if you don't talk to them ever, how are you going to build a bond worth keeping? You're not. You guys are going to break up. I hate to tell you this. If you don't see your partner, if you don't make time for your partner, you're probably going to break up. Okay? Same with God. Why would you think it would be any different? If you want that bond, that connection, you have to build it. You have to strengthen it. If you want to get stronger, you go to the gym. If you want to lose weight and appear healthier, you watch what you eat, right? You get disciplined in that area of your life. Why wouldn't you do that with God? <laughs> like, I am so baffled every single time someone's like, I just want to be more positive. How do you do it? You're so positive. And I'm like, why well, practice? It's, it's not like I, I just woke up happy. I choose to be happy. I, I choose God. I choose positivity. I don't just wake up like, well, today is a great day every single day. No, I'm like, oh, woke up super annoyed. Oh my gosh, the dog is barking. Oh, the neighbor's so loud. Oh, it's so hot. It's so cold. Right? Like I could find a thousand things to be unhappy about. But the reality is until you learn to be content, with where you are in life and what you have, you're never going to be content. You're always going to find a reason to be upset or dissatisfied. You need to come to Jesus and allow him to change the way you think, to change who you are as a person, for you to find positivity, for you to find happiness in life. You're not going to find that until you allow God to change the way you think. I need God's mercy. Okay, Lord knows I need God's mercy. I'm not perfect. Okay, there are days where I'm driving and I get all aggravated and I'm like, oh, this stinking person cut me off. Where's your blinker? Oh my gosh, right? We all have that. Those are times I need God's mercy. I'm like, okay, Lord, calm down. <laughs> I know that's a silly example, but it's true. Like the less time you devote to God, the less routine you get in being positive and happy and uplifting and godly, the more vulnerable you become to Satan. And it could come in any form from cussing out thy neighbor to 
lying to stealing to whatever example you want to take here like literally one negative thought can just go down this roadmap of just negativity and i don't know about you but i don't have time for that i'm too busy doing this sharing god's word telling all of my success and giving it all to god and glorifying god because he has given me such a beautiful life and an abundance of peace why would i why would i give that up right like pfft. I don't know about you, but I choose peace, love, and happiness over anything over here, okay? God, anything else. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look up there. See, when you shift your focus from everything down here to him, nothing down here matters. You might kind of see it in, in your peripheral, right? Like you're still looking up. You could kind of see like down here. You don't really care. When it starts moving and wiggling around, you're like, okay, what's that? And then you like shift your focus back up, right? Okay, same with God, all right? When you're focused on God, you might see like all these little tiny things, but they become more clear, okay? Let me let me say this in a different way. When you shift your focus on God and you see like the devil working down here, you can see it, but you become more aware of it. You are able to say, oh, that's Satan. Oh, oh, that's a distraction. Oh, no, mm -mm, focus is still up here, right? You can see it in your peripheral. Us parents are great about that. You can see it in your peripheral, but you know it's just a distraction. Okay, when you're focused on getting your work done and you can see your kid running around over here and he's probably gonna hurt himself, whatever, you can like yell at him and say, hey, knock that off, but you're still focused. You can do that with God too. You can focus on God and see the devil working and say, hey, knock that off. I, mm, God, mm -mm, nope, not happening. I'm focused on God. You can do that. It's okay. Same with your day-to-day -day life. There are some people in your life that are just there to cause chaos. It's okay to simply say, hey, yeah, I don't need that. Sorry. You don't have to give it your energy, your time. You don't owe it an explanation. You can just say, yeah, no, that's not gonna work, sorry, and move on. You don't need to give them a whole storyline of why you can't give them your attention. You get to choose what you give your attention to. You don't have to explain yourself. That's the beauty, beautiful part about being you. Another thing, okay, I want to I wanna remind you guys that the Lord will protect you and strengthen you. He is your armor. He is your shield. A lot of us think that we are going through the daily struggles alone. You're not. God is literally always with you. When you get that like little feeling in the back of your head, a lot of us think that's our conscious or like, what, our gut feeling? No, that's God. That's God saying, hey, that, mm, mm, hey, hey, warning light, right? Yeah, that's God. That's not your gut telling you anything. Your gut is not an actual instinct. That's God reminding you, hey, I'm your shield. Hey, I'm your strength. Hey, I'm with you. You don't have to do this alone so that you don't do it alone. Like, I, come on, come on. You're not, you're not going to get through anything in life alone, okay? God is your strength. God is your armor. Let him protect you. Let him go into battle with you, for you. You can literally stand on the sidelines. God will fight your battle. And when you win it, you can say, yeah, that was my God. He did that. So I just, I know I kind of like jumped around, but I am, I'm grateful that everyone's noticing how far I've come in life. I'm so grateful for that. But it wasn't me. It was God. God carried me. God helped me. God changed me into the beautiful woman I am today. Anyone that went to school with me, anyone that knew me before I had my son knows I was just chaos. I would party all the time. I was one of those girls that would just play with guys' emotions just because it was fun. I would burn any bridge possible just to further myself in life. I was not a good, trustworthy person to have around. And I'm sure a lot of you hearing this today are like, yeah, okay, Jeannie, you're like one of the best people I know. Yeah, but that's because God's in my life now. Back then, I was just 100% sin. I was 100% Satan. I was not a good person. Today, I can come to you and say, yeah, I'm a good person. I'll tell you the truth. Probably will hurt, but I'll tell you it. You're not going to enjoy it, but I'll tell you it. It might hurt your feelings. But God's in my soul now, and I'm not afraid. Neither should you be. But that is all that I have for you. Um, I want to leave you the way I leave you every single time. Make it your mission to make someone else's day better. I hope you have a fantastic week this week and allow God to take residence in your soul. If you want to be transformed into a better person, you need God. Okay. So devote time every single day just for God, become routine, become obedient, and you will be so surprised at the less sin has in your life. 
the less grasp on you that Satan has because you're devoting that time to God and you will become way more aware of sin and Satan's tactics. Okay, so that's all I got for you. I hope you took something away from this. And just remember that Jesus is the door, okay?